We're here in the Nano Shmano laboratory and we do this like session, let's call it. For 10 days, we're going to be here in this space and work on this project we call Nano Shmano, Shmal Meta. Um, so what is it? Where does it come from? In fact, I met Stefan Döpner in Basel one and a half year ago and we were discussing there's all this artist collaboration with scientists and it's all crap and blah 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 and it was late in the evening and we said let's do something together <laughs> and make it better <laughs> and so he organized with Kapelica Gallery uh, a first series Nano Shmano in September 2010 and we also invited another local artist Bostian Leskovšek so in the end we have a team of a sound artist, a sculptor, robotic artist, and me as a nanoscientist and maybe communicator of interdisciplinary fields. And it was great fun. We built many kind of nano shmano artifacts. And so we said we have to do this again. And so this time we have invited more people. So we have two more guests. That's Bengt Jolen, a hacker, programmer, artist from Sweden, and Erik Reimhult a former colleague of mine, a real nanoscientist. And we work this time on nanomaterials. So we call it small matter. And we want to look at what is possible in an environment like that, in a like self-made laboratory, in an atelier, in a studio. What can we do with nano nanomaterials? What is the potential to use them in a creative installation or how can we you know, make these nano materials explorable, experienceable, also for other people? We can build a microscope out of a webcam for five euros, very easy. Um, and so we try other methods, like we hack some consumer electronics, like old hard drives, scanners, printers, and look if we can really use this like consumer electronics to do cool stuff with these nano materials. These materials on a small scale, like nanomaterials, it's just very, very small stuff. And there is not only, you know, dead stuff that's very, very small, there's also a lot of living stuff that's very, very small. And that's kind of one, something we want to explore, how, how, can, how this merging of disciplines that's very prominent in nanotechnology, how can we also do that? So we grow mushrooms here, and we also have some algae that's also like very small living matter that does something to, to its environment and then we have some LEDs here you know light is always very good so because a lot of people say nano stuff you can't see which is not completely true it's difficult to see maybe not with the eyes but having light is very important so Mark and me found each other in, in Basel on a festival for weird art, <laughs> electronic, <laughs> art. electronic art but that was the most weird part of it, I think. <laughs> and uh, we heard of each other before because I worked a lot, worked a lot in Switzerland. And uh, yeah, we met and we found out we have uh, some chemical <laughs> level where we could work together. And um, actually, I met Bengt in Beijing <laughs> uh, on an exhibition there where we both participated. 
and uh, uh, Eric I met at Marx uh, Hectaria pro, uh, project and um, how now Mark found both of them I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mark did his PhD where I was working before. Yeah, they were actually mm -hmm. collaborators. <laughs> At the moment this is a stripped down DVD or CD player, so the idea was to use these fur fluids here, they're basically magnetic particles, small small particles that we make to go into solution by giving them a coating of a single layer of molecules. Then we can sort of take them out from, in this case they have nano properties, they behave like small nanoscale objects, but if we approach a magnet to them they will form these strange fur fluid patterns. You probably cannot see that here, but it turns into like a spiky hedgehog. So the idea is to build a machine that's uh, controlled by a small chip that basically brings the particles in and out of solution and then couple that to, to some sort of event we haven't defined yet. You sort of you you work with a lot of different other scientists from different disciplines, and this is very typical for this kind of research. Mm. But what I realized, like working with Mark, knowing Mark and so, is that if you want to communicate this to people, there's also something that requires a lot of skills. You have to combine it with electronics, you have to combine it with computers, you have to combine it with communication. Mm. It's it's very difficult to make people understand something which is not in their ordinary day. Mm. So uh, because we can't relate to how these things. Work. Mm, of course. It, they look like magic, but they're yeah. really not. So you have to bring them into the ordinary day mm. and make them not. That's it. And then I try to figure out why, if I do this, the liquid is moving in the opposite direction to the fan. And despite 10 years of physics, I don't know. <laughs> Just discovered it today. It's very strange. So the fan is rotating that way, but the liquid is rotating the other. But I don't know what is, why it's doing this. Trying to find out how to work with this, this ship. This is a CCD sensor from the, from the scanner, and so it's uh, sort of a, a camera that is just a single line. But what what we want to do with this is to build a spectrophotometer uh, that we can send light through matter, and it will be uh, uh, refracted by the matter, and we can pick it up here and analyze the contents of the material. Uh, so. Soon we will connect this to, to other ships and some light sources. Uh, for example, with, uh, if we can see ultraviolet light, then we can see how enzymes work in living matter to see how they consume uh, energy and, and these signs of life. Another part is this uh, inkjet printer, where we want to use uh, this inkjet printer for printing other chemicals on the ink. One plan is to uh, uh, print uh, silver nitrate and acid, ascorbic acid, which is just one of vitamin C. Uh, and when they come together, they form small nanoparticles of solid silver. But they conduct electricity as well, so uh, practically you would be able to print circuit boards, for example. Uh, but you, you can also use them for uh, uh, Printing other chemicals and make make an arrays of uh, tests on a uh, sort of automated scale. We're on quite common ground today. I, I mean, I'm sort of a self-educated hacker, but I have also studied a bit of chemistry and stuff and playing with these kinds of things, so setting up my own lab in Stockholm as well. Uh, so I think it's common interest and in uh, makes it makes us speak the same language, even though people have, uh, I mean, no, 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 no. quite specialized this is in, where, um, in some subjects, like, like Eric of, uh, is the master uh, of nanotechnology, of course. Um, uh, but uh, we have enough of a common huh? language to be able to talk about and try to resolve things together. Mm -hmm. uh, also to, I mean, when you come from another direction, you see things from another angle as well, so you can actually Combine these efforts to make something nice, bigger, <laughs> better, or newer. Aerogel. I want to do a lot of aerogel uh, fungi 
-hmm. with fungi and uh, with this set uh, of fluid. Mm -hmm. Some screen which they found, some screen that you see. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I learned how it was, uh, what means this material and how to use for some visualization and how to cut this. Yeah, here. Uh, we will see, we will go on as long as uh, we can in a way.